deal with the state-owned petroleum companies in the Middle East. Why Ruto chose to characterize the deal as a G2G is the first red flag that points to mischief in this deal. I now know that the characterization of this deal as a G2G was meant to shield the three Kenyan companies from paying a 30% corporate tax. I will return to this matter later. Two, the shilling has continued to fall against the dollar. The cost of oil has not come down since the deal was signed. Four, the scarcity of the dollar has continued. Five, the landlocked countries that depend on us for oil are abandoning our pipeline because it has become too expensive. In other words, the deal has not addressed any of the problems Ruto said it would. When Ruto initiated this deal, the US dollar to the Kenya shilling exchange, exchange rate was 132. Today, six months later, it is Kenya shillings 159 to the dollar. The cost of fuel shot up significantly after the deal. Why have things moved from bad to worse since the deal was signed? Well, the deal was a scam for which we now demand full disclosure and full accountability. It is corrupt and rotten to the core. It is state capture by Mr. Ruto and company and a conspiracy against the country. Ruto's collapsing the country while feeding Kenyans on lullabies. Other than keeping the cost of oil permanently high in Kenya, the deal is costing the country dearly in terms of trade in petroleum with the landlocked neighbors. It is shrouded in deep secrecy. To date, only two documents have been made public. That is, the Master Framework Agreement with Petroleum Trading Entities and the Open Tender System Modified Agreement with Marketers. The Supplier Purchase Agreement between the Middle East oil farms and the hand-picked distributors in Kenya has never been seen. We challenge Mr. Ruto to publish this document. Nobody knows how Gulf Energy, Galana Oil Kenya Limited, and Oryx Energies Kenya Limited got nominated to handle local logistics. But the hand-picked distributors are selling oil to us at almost twice the price from bulk suppliers. These companies are also manipulating deliveries dates ranges so that they can minimize on prices. We know that in August this year, four months after the deal, the government allowed Oryx Energies to sell oil at prices that had been inflated by 17%. In the Ruto deal, Oryx is a supplier of diesel to other oil marketing companies in the country. The excuse was to delay in discharging fuel at the jetty. This shady business model is being deployed by all the companies that were retained in the Ruto deal. They buy at low prices, delay discharging, then ask to be allowed to offload at higher prices and the cost is passed on to the consumers. In the case of Oryx, it had bought the diesel at an average plus price of $97.88, that is uh, 14,182 shillings per barrel 
in July, but was allowed to sell the same to oil marketing companies at 114.5 US dollars, that is 16,585 shillings per barrel. Some of the companies charging the higher prices deliver more cargo than they were contracted to deliver, forcing Kenyans to buy more of the oil whose prices are inflated, hence the permanent high prices of petroleum products. The ministry is, ch is ch changing billing month to allow the oil firms quote higher prices. For instance, cargo that was bought in July when the price was low is allowed to quote higher August prices and pass the burden to the consumer. The deal that Ruto hailed as phenomenal has resulted in high landed costs as a result of structuring of the contract. The faults include the double counting of some, some cost elements and fixed freighted premium which sometimes are higher by up to $50 per metric ton. The cost is passed on to the consumers. It also lacks flexibility which further exacerbates the pricing model. Uganda has announced that it will no longer purchase petroleum products from Kenya because middlemen have inflated prices by up to 59%, imposing too high a cost on consumers. The exact same scenario is prevailing here. The middlemen President Museveni is talking about are the Kenya government officials. I repeat, the middlemen President Museveni is talking about are the Kenya government officials. The deal has interrupted supply. Gulf Energy, which manages up to 50% of government importation, has been experiencing serious challenges securing letters of credit. This is because the single bank that was picked to provide the letter of, letter of credit is struggling with big bad loans. Consequently, there's delay for clearance of importers to upload oil. Ships are queuing at sea for up to 18 days awaiting a confirmation of letter of credit in order to discharge while the Kenya pipeline company goes without operations for days because there is nothing to process. Then the companies incur demurrage, which is transferred to the consumer. Under the, under the open tender system, that the old system, demurrage costs are 45,000 US dollars per day for the biggest tanker docking at the port of Mombasa and $31,000 per day for the second biggest vessel. But under the Ruto deal, damage has risen up to $70,000 per day. This cost is passed on to the consumers at the pump. You will have noticed that Tanzania recently reduced the cost of petroleum products from 1st of November, while Kenyans remain the same or just marginally changed. Tanzania said it was reducing prices because of decrease in the world oil prices by an average of 5.68%, while premiums for importation of petroleum products had decreased by an average of 13% for super petrol also known as premium motor gasoline or premium motor spirit, and 25% for automotive gas oil or diesel. We will not hear that story here because of the corrupt dealings written into the Ruto deal. As ships accumulate extra charges on the high seas, the money sits in an escrow account in a local bank where it earns interest. It remains unclear 
who the beneficiaries of the crude interest is. This deal has led to high cost of oil products sourced through the Northern Corridor Transit Route, the Kenya route. The freight and premium rates for the May 2023 cargoes were higher in the Northern Corridor by 61% compared to the Central Corridor. Northern Corridor is the run, running Mombasa, Nairobi, Malaba, Kampala, and to DRC. The Central Corridor, the one that comes from Dar es Salaam all the way to Rwanda, Uganda, and DRC. That rise in freight and premium is reflected at the pump. That is why, that is, that is what has pushed Uganda and other forward markets like South Sudan, Eastern DRC, Rwanda, and Burundi to consider importing goods through the Central Corridor or Tanzania route. Uganda is shifting to the Central Corridor meaning that they are going to be using the port of Dar es Salaam or Tanga rather than Mombasa. The volume it ferries via Kenya pipeline has dropped by 52% from, from 70%. So other than making petroleum products ever more costly, the deal is going to kill Kenya, the Kenya pipeline company as soon as this year. You need to know that it is the Ugandan market that owns the Kenya pipeline company for an exchange. The transit volumes account for 51% of Kenya pipeline company's revenue, which stands at an average of 2.6 billion shillings per month. When the company loses in the volume transported, it results in higher tariffs which is transferred to the local consumer in terms of higher cost of petroleum products. A 10% reduction in the transit volumes would result in a 5% increase in tariffs, which is reflected in the pumps in terms of cost of fuel. The change of route by landlocked trading partners will force a number of Kenyan oil marketing companies and logistic firms to close shop. Of course, this leads to job losses, loss of foreign exchange, loss of revenue for the country as a result of KPC losing transit share. Ideally, Kenya should have provided a pipeline and storage capacity and location for Uganda market. Kenya should also have allowed the direct participation of the Uganda oil marketers in sourcing petroleum products to the Northern Corridor route. But because corruption was written into the deal, the route administration could not allow neighbors in fear of exposure. Consequently, the KPC is set to lose substantial business to Tanzania, to Tanzania, sorry. Uganda's shift the Central Corridor will most certainly influence Rwanda, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, and South Sudan. As KPC loses business, it will charge more for its product to stay afloat, hence the ever-rising cost of petroleum products. The deal only ended up creating irregular supplies and higher prices. Open tender system allowed for competitive sourcing of fuel. Monopolistic tendencies for purposes of maximizing profit goes against the demand for efficiency and the need for lower prices. It is going to drive a number of oil marketing firms out of business, leading to job losses and loss of revenue for the government. The deal that Ruto signed with the oil companies has excessively high freights and premiums 